let daddy decide. Which is how do I? And uh, uh, this one is how do I learn a new programming language? We don't have any experts here for that. Uh, <laughs> <sorry>. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, so with my new position that I started in September, I've had to learn uh, some PowerShell scripting, um, had to learn a little bit of C Sharp, and like we, the, my new area supports so many different things that I've had to learn quite a bit. And to be frank, my go-to source is Google because um, uh, most programming languages, at least from a logical standpoint, are comparable. And so it's just like, how do I do this, but in this language type of thing? And then you, well, one thing I check is how recent were the posts because <laughs> yeah. programming languages their their syntax changes over time so if you're looking at something from you know seven eight nine years ago that might not be the way to do it anymore <laughs> um and so yeah I, I consult google look at what other people are doing and see if it runs <laughs> that that a lot of times that's what it is is just seeing what runs and you, what you end up doing as, as a programmer is you build up your own personal library of source code. And then you're like, oh, I did that over here. You go over to that, you copy, you paste, you make adjustments as necessary, and you just reuse code that you've already been using. Um, and then you're like, oh, wait, this isn't the way to do it anymore. And you have to update it every now and again. But yeah, a lot of times it's it's Google. I mean, there's plenty of like websites and stuff that you can go to to learn, but that's what I do. What about you, mm -hmm. Steven? What do you do? I try and come up with some sort of thing I want to make. Like, I got to have a goal. So, like, when I was first learning Python, for instance, I had Python. I had to do it at work, but I was still new. They hired me, and they're like, do you know Python? I was like, not really. They're like, you'll learn. It's fine. <laughs> but so I had to kind of baptism by fire in some ways. But with that, we had a framework, and I could kind of pick apart other people's work to see, like, what I needed to do. But uh, to really cement into how I did it, I wanted to make a Twitch chatbot. Uh, so I kind okay. of started with googling like how do i start making a twitch chatbot with python and then you kind of learn from there nowadays if i had to do it i would like this is going to tie back to earlier but i would lean heavy on some chat gpt um i have done that for my new I, position be like how do i do yeah. this in powershell i use that this i don't know how to use python decorators really well like i didn't learn a lot about class inheritance and how decorators work so I just was like, I want. I'm doing this code the same time, same way in four different functions. What can I write a decorator that I can just slap on each of these functions and remove all that, and it just does it itself? Yes, you can, Stephen. I asked my local AI, and it said, <laughs> Yeah, here's actually how you do it. And I didn't trust it, so I went and I took it and I kind of. This is the thing about AI; like it can get you most of the way, uh, but you need mm -hmm. to know if you're looking at trash or you're looking at something real. So I took what it was telling me to do and I simplified it and I did like just a simple hello world kind of thing, uh, but using the kind of the structure it gave me to validate it. Like, oh, that is how those work. Um, so yeah, if I had to do it now, it would be kind of asking AI like, hey, can you give me... One thing I ask anytime I'm trying to play with a new model and figure out like, well, what can this one tell me that's different than this other one? Um, it's usually, can you show me how to make a website in Python uh, that just does a hello world when I visit it? And mm -hmm. it spits that out pretty fast. I'm like, okay, yeah, this code looks legit. And I'll from there, I know that I know how to do that. So I trust it a little more as I work my way through the more complicated things. And, and mm -hmm. what I found, I did this, uh, I built a project called polarbear.me. Uh, P O L L E R. It's a polling website. Did it for a hackathon. I didn't know any front end. I didn't know how to work a front end for to save my life. I just need. I, I needed a UI. I knew how to make the back background stuff work. I just didn't know how to present it to people. I did that all with AI. I'm like, okay, I want to use this framework. Somebody told me about. I want it to have a question field. I want it to have polling answer fields. And by the end of that week, I had asked it enough questions built enough that I could then understand what I had built a little better. 
it's kind of like your parents read to you for a while and then you start to realize you're you're picking up on the words in the book like you're starting to see them as words and not just squiggles as your parents teach you so i'm i'm a big fan of using chat gpt as a as a, a way to get in and get it to kind of show you what to do because you're going to learn organically from that experience it's like having a mentor but and it, it is a mentor because people are wrong a lot and chat gpt is going to be <laughs> wrong a lot so you're kind of going to have to work your way through it It'll force where it is wrong. It will force you into learning a little bit. Random right. kid says chat GPT is almost as confident in itself as Charles is in himself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, one, one of the things we talked about in previous weeks about the AI stuff is uh, I, you know, I, as you mentioned, I'm also in it, but I am not a programmer by any stretch. Um, but I have a bunch of people that, um, sometimes we'll run into a technical problem that they're just trying to muscle their way through. And I've used chat GPT just to go, Hey, uh, how do you solve this mm -hmm. in PowerShell? And while what it spits out, isn't going to solve the problem. Most of the time, it gives them a place to start looking again. Yeah. Right. And so it triggers a different direction. Um, and I find that very valuable, um, that, that kind of thing. Because, you know, it's kind of like writer's block, right? Where you just, you're just going, I banged my head against this problem for like the last three hours. I have no idea where to go now. Sometimes it helps. And sometimes it'll trigger a different thought process. Um, sure. So, yeah, why not use the tools? Yeah. We call it rubber ducking. Whenever you've got, you just need to get it out of your head and onto yeah. paper. Like I do that nine times out of ten. Hey, buddy. I like asking an actual friend at work. I'm thinking about this. Oh, never mind. I just realized what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, right. You just, the minute you get it out, and Chat GPT is an excellent rubber duck uh, yep. partner, especially if you've got some idea of where you're where you want to go. Right. Yeah, so, learn to code. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to learn to code. Don't let everybody tell you you have to learn to code. It's but you know it's fun it's a fun practice i tried once <laughs> i hated it so much <laughs> do you want to know how i got into it kurt yeah it was not because i don't have a computer science degree i'm an english literature person i wanted to code <laughs> because i thought syntax highlighting was really pretty <laughs> I, wanted, and I wanted to write code <laughs> because i thought i loved syntax highlighting and the oh. way things like the fonts and stuff. I'm very visual. My code is so scrappy because of it, but like, it's, that's how I got into it. I had wow. nothing. And my job <laughs> made me, uh, that was really the, the, the thing. Yeah. My first venture into coding was in high school, coding my TI 83 plus calculator. So our, uh, our math textbook actually had a couple of example programs that yeah. it showed you the code for. And so I'm like, oh, well, that's not too bad. <laughs> and so I made a full fledged program to help me in like my trigonometry class and a whole bunch of other stuff. And I even I wanted to make sure it was on the up and up. So I told my teacher, I'm like, look, I've got this program that I made. Is it OK if I use it on the test? And they're like. If you know the formula well enough to program it, you're good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if, That's a really cool teacher. <laughs> so, so, like, I had the quadratic formula programmed into my calculator, and I just had to plug in the variables, and it spit out the answer for me. And it was back then, well, depending on the teacher, but that particular teacher, I didn't have to show my work. Mm, so yeah. I was done with the, those tests in like five minutes, whereas everyone else is taking an hour. <laughs> you knew you had it. Yeah. yeah. That's um, a cool teacher. So, yeah. Yeah. That was good times. Uh, I had a few people try to uh, get the program for me. I'm like, sure. Give me 10 bucks. All right. Now he's thinking. And, and then they were like, oh, never mind. <laughs> but I did have one person, one person bought it off me. And uh, so, yeah, I was like, all right. That's Ching. sweet. Yeah, rock and roll. <laughs> Love it. Oh, but yeah, that was my my first venture into programming. 